Hello everyone, Goldie One here. In this tutorial I'll be showing you how to make a safe nuclear reactor that will include an information panel showing you the temperature and uh, how long it lasts and if it's turned on or off or on. Also it will have an alarm system that will make a noise and flash if there's a problem and it will automatically shut the system down. So this is how we're going to make it and what it's going to look like. Ok, this so is what it looks like. As you can probably hear, you can hear the reactor going off now. Uh, we've got power coming out to a high voltage transformer and to MFSU which are now full, medium voltage transformer and an MFE which are also full. Uh, this is the alarm system which I'm going to go over in a moment. This is the panel that shows temperatures at zero. It's running at output 320 U per tick and there's just under 24 minutes left. It lasts 2 hours 46 minutes I think. Um, it's made out of reinforced stone, a reinforced door, a button, reinforced glass, you don't need the glass but I'd like to be able to see inside. So let's have a look in. So this is an exclusive, well this is a power switch firstly, as you can see it's powered on, this is an exclusive OR circuit, which I'll explain when I actually come to build it. Um, this is a remote sensor, so cause I've got this thermal digital display or something like that it's called. Uh, I've got this set up so that if it goes over 3500 degrees, uh, it'll emit a signal there, which will actually turn off the circuit, stopping this overheating, even though it's 8,500 melting point. Um, it will also sound these alarms here and here. Yeah, so I'll just test that just to show you. So I'll set this to zero. It's loud. Sorry about that. Uh, it is quite loud. I have my sound set quite high. Um, so yeah, that will also switch it off. Uh, stopping it going any higher. So let's jump into creative and show you how this is made. So now we're in creative mode I'm going to show you how to build it. So first thing is the actual room that I'm going to be putting it in. It's made of reinforced stone again with reinforced glass and reinforced stone and button. Uh, it's 13 blocks wide by 10 blocks deep and 7 blocks high from floor to ceiling. Um, inside we're just set up where we're going to have the lever and the exclusive OR gate um, and a strategically placed dirt block for the nuclear chamber and then a hole in the roof for power to go out and this is where the information panel is going to go. Uh, so we're going to start off by putting down the nuclear reactor. We need one and six reaction chambers. We're also going to need one industrial information panel, five information panel extenders, one lever and one remote sensor. <coughs> So we start off by placing the nuclear reactor on top of that dirt block and getting rid of the dirt block. Then we need to put a reaction chamber on every side like that. And that starts set up. Now we'll go straight onto the information panel. So the actual industrial information panel itself needs to go bottom left. Then the extenders out like that. You can tell because it will join up. Now this does require a redstone signal, so I'm going to put a shift click lever there. Turn that on, so this should now be lit up, but obviously there's no information because it's not linked to anything. Now to link it, we get the remote sensor kit, shift click, and it changes into a reactor sensor location card, which we click on the information panel, just drop in there. Uh, you can call it what you want. I'm just going to call it nuclear reactor. Um, on off, simple, heat level is temperature it's running at, max heat is 10,000 but you don't really need to see that so I turn that off, melting temperature is 8,500 but again you don't need to see it, output in a U per tick and time for your uranium cells or plutonium cells or wherever you're going to run it. I use quad uranium cells which gives 2 hours 46 minutes I think. Uh, this is a upgrade for a wireless upgrade so that you can have the actual information panel further away from the reactor but I don't really need it so I don't use one and I think this one is an upgrade to change the colour of it but again I don't really bother with that and that's just to change the layout so if we're going to look at it now that's how it looks, you can see temperature zero there's nothing outputting because it's not set up yet, there's nothing remaining because there's no uranium in and it's currently switched off uh, so the next thing we're going to do is set up the exclusive OR gate and on lever and the alarm system which will automatically shut it down and make a noise if there's a problem To make that, we're going to need seven redstone torches, some redstone, a lever, one wireless transmitter, three wireless receivers, one thermal monitor, and two industrial alarms. 
So the exclusive or gate, switch there. And then redstone torches. The one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In that format. And then redstone set out like that. Again you can pause this if you need to see how it looks. And from this block here, redstone going out straight to your bottom reaction chamber. And test it. Switch that on. That's now on. Switch it off. It's now off. Okay, now to set up the actual alarm system. So I want a thermal monitor. Shift click and put it there. Set that to three and a half thousand. Redstone and then a wireless transmitter, which we'll set to 100. And then wireless receivers, one here. And then a redstone there, set that to 100 as well. So set that to zero, that triggers that. It will turn it on because it was switched off. Let's put that back up to 3000. So this is switched on, it's all running, everything's going good. See it went off, so it went too hot, this would kick in, so shutting this circuit down. Now for the alarm system bit, just go outside. So we need two receivers, again set them to 100. Industrial alarms. Let's get rid of all this rubbish. I don't like to carry extra stuff. As you can see now it's on, everything's running good. For whatever now this is gonna be quite loud. So if for whatever reason this went off, it'll shut you'll notice it's shut down and the alarm should go off. So that's it shut down. Alarms flashing. The alarm itself isn't going off, but I think that's because I've got my sound settings, but normally there'd be an alarm si signalling now anyway. Let's just set that back. So this is now back all up, so this is pretty much the setup. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is sort out the power uh, output, and then once we've got the power, we're actually going to set up the chamber itself. So for the power, we're going to need some Four insulated high voltage cables, glass fiber cable, an HV transformer, MFSU, MV transformer and an MFE. <coughs> so first thing. And all this down here. This high voltage four insulated cable into a high voltage transformer which will then go into a MFSU no, I'm not set that up right like that so they're all input sides, that's output side, this is opposite so they're all input that's output so at the minute there's no power at all so more glass fiber cable a medium voltage transformer, just put wrong way. So again, that's input, these are all output. If you run that straight into MFE, you just blow it up because the output at MFSU is too high. And then MFE. These are all inputs, so that's output. Just like that. And then you could have this MFE run into, a, you could have a low voltage transformer to a bat box, and then you could run that straight to machines like furnaces, pulverizers, uh, not pulverizers, compressor, stuff like that. So that's actual power system set up. So now let's get onto the actual reaction chamber itself and get that sorted out. This is what you're actually going to need to set up the reaction chamber. Uh, 26 overclocked heat vents, 12 component heat vents, 8 component heat exchangers, 6 reactor chambers, 1 nuclear reactor, which we've already set those two up, 4, four times 60 k coolant cells, and four quad uranium cells and now I'm going to go through exactly the layout on what it should look like I'm also going to include a diagram as well so this is what the finished product will look like I'm going to go into it in more detail on how you actually set it up but I 
recommend taking a screenshot of that or just saving a picture of that to help you actually set this up. So now I'm going to go through step by step what you put and where you put it. Just clear all this first. I don't like this crap. This is a fun part. So in this, we're going to need 26 of these overclocked heat vents. We need 12 component heat vents. We're going to need eight component heat exchangers, four 60k coolant cells, and four quadruenium cells. So we'll start off with these first. So there's 26 of these. And then what I'm going to do now is show you the actual layout itself. So to start with, you'd set these overclocked heat vents like this. Like I said, you could pause this video at any point to show this, because it is a bit strange. But once I've got it set up, you won't have to mess about with this again to match the bottom. So you might want to pause that. So there are your 26 overclocked heat vents. Now they do take quite a few materials. It is quite material using this recipe, but like I say, it's totally safe. I've run it for ages and never ever had a problem with it. So next thing we're going to put on, let's just set it today first. So it's going to be the component heat vent, and like I said, there's 12 of these. They're going to go in this configuration. And again, you might want to pause it for that. And like I said there was the component heat vent, and there's 12 of those. I'm going to lag it here, and then we need component heat exchange. There should be eight of these. And these go in this configuration. As you can see, it's starting to come together now. So there you come on the exchanges, eight of those, and they go in like that. And then we've nearly done. Um, all we now is a 60k coolant cells, four of those, and then four quad uranium cells. Coolant cells go in each corner, like so, and then uranium cells. I've already got this switched on, so it started running straight away. And um, so that's basically it. Uh, what I'm going to do? Get rid of that. Cause I'm going to take those. Get rid of those. So this is the final. So as you can see, like I said, 12 hours 46 minutes. It's outputting 320 U per tick. Temperatures at zero. Uh, so the alarms are not going off, which is a good sign. So just to prove that, all heat, zero. And then EU reader, 380 EU per tick output, it says 320, but that's close enough for me. Um, again, if I set this, alarm will be going off and it shuts it down automatically. Let's just turn that back on. So yeah, it's pretty safe. I mean, I only... I mean, when I come off the server, I usually switch it off just because it creates that much power. It's not really necessary to keep it running all the time. I just make conscious effort to check that. And usually, like I say, in, in my actual server, I've got a chest set up in here somewhere what has got more quad uranium cells because these will deplete. And these will all fix themselves. I think you might have to replace these, but I've not had a problem with that because, like I say, it's quite a good setup where it never really goes above temperature so it's like uber safe um, probably a bit overdone to be honest because like I say it's never blown up never had any problem at all with it reinforced stone so it does use quite a lot 
materials a very lot, but I could leave this learning, leave my computer, leave the server, leave chunk orders running and not be worried about it in any way, shape or form. This would not damage my factory in any way. Right, so let's just check on the power. So again, these are four times high voltage insulated cable into a high voltage transformer. Because uh, if you have plutonium, there'll be too much power coming through here just to put it straight into it. MFSU. So I know it's not actually necessary at the moment, but that's why it's there. Uh, this is already fully powered, the MFE. Medium voltage transformer. And this should be powering up, so as you can see, slowly but surely, it is powering up. And um, that won't take too long to get to full power. So if you like this video, if you've got any questions, any information you want to give me, any tips you think that I could improve this set setup, please leave a comment below, I'll do a video response. Uh, we do read all those comments and we do try and reply to every single one of them. So any questions, anything you don't understand or you want re-explaining or any other videos you'd like us to do, please just let us know. And like I say, constructive criticism, if you find anything that I've done that could be done better or cheaper, more efficiently, let me know because I'm always looking out to improve everything. So yeah, this is basic setup. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. See you later.